What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to go through the machine learning process. So we're going to start by briefly explaining what is machine learning and then we're going to go through all the steps of the machine learning process and all the tasks within each step. Also, I'm going to provide some practical examples in Python of all the steps and processes just to help you gain a better understanding of the machine learning process. By the way, if you're new to my channel and you're passionate about data science, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel as I will be posting regularly data science informative videos and data science tutorials. Right, so what is machine learning to start with? Machine learning is when we are using statistical models and algorithms in order to perform tasks like classification and predictions without explicit instructions. So we program the machine to learn from data and we are not giving the machine any instructions on how to learn from that data. And before we start going into the machine learning process and all the steps you have to follow, let me just say that this process does not necessarily mean that is the process you're going to follow in every single machine learning problem. Just because every problem is different to each other, you might have to uh, follow a slightly different approach to solve that problem. However, this is like a standard uh, structure approach that data scientists use to uh, solve their machine learning problems. Right, starting with the first step, which is the problem formulation phase, here is where you clearly need to understand what are you trying to solve and what the problem is. You need to clearly state the problem and also clearly state what are you trying to predict or what are you trying to achieve. And just to give you an example to understand this first step, I'm going to be using the two machine learning tutorials I have done. One is a binary logistic regression one and the other one is a linear regression one where I'm going to have the links in the description. In these tutorials, I, I go through all the steps and all the tasks and I actually apply the code so you can see step by step how to solve and approach a machine learning problem. However, in this video, I'm going to be using them just to be showing you examples of all the steps and the tasks. So in our case, I'm going to show you the problem formulation phase right now. So in this example, I clearly state that I'm trying to investigate what factors or variables affect a good or a bad loan. So I clearly state the problem and what I'm trying to solve. Additionally, I also state that I'm trying to make predictions whether a customer should get its loan approved or not based on their characteristics. So again, I'm, I'm clearly stating that I want to make predictions if the customer should get in its loan approved or not. And I also clearly state that my Y variable, so what I'm trying to predict is whether the loan is going to be a good loan, yes, or it's going to be a bad loan, no. So back to the Excel file in the problem formulation phase is where you clearly need to state the problem and clearly need to state what you're trying to achieve. Right, the next step now is to gather the raw data you need in order to solve the problem you have just stated. And this raw data could either already be in the database. So if you go to the data science team structure, you're going to have to speak as a data scientist, you're going to have to speak to the database managers in order to identify where the data you need is stored. And additionally, if it's not in the database, then you will probably have to go and speak to the business and identify where is that data you need stored and get that data and put it in the database in order to run your analysis. Right, after you gather the raw data you need, then you move into the data pre-processing phase. So this is actually the most time consuming task of a data scientist. So if you've watched my uh, where do data scientists spend their time uh, video, then you see that data pre-processing actually sits on 25% of the data scientist's time and is the most time consuming task or thing that the data scientist does. Right, the things that you're going to be performing now, the tasks within this step is things like exploratory data analysis, so investigating uh, your features and obje observations, the number of elements in each feature, if you have any null values, if you have any missing values, checking the distribution, checking the relationships, 
You're going to be doing data cleaning and data aggregation. You're going to be joining the data together from multiple different data sources. You're going to be doing things like normalizing and scaling your data, converting your categorical features into numeric, feature engineering, feature selection. And there is additionally, there is more things you could be doing in this data pre-processing phase, but I have only listed some of them down here. And please note that depending how good your data pre-processing phase is, it can actually have an impact on how good your model or your prediction is going to be afterwards. So this is why you need to spend a lot of time into data pre-processing. And just to show you a practical example, I'm going back to the tutorial now, and this is the data pre-processing phase. So I'm investigating my null values, I'm excluding my null values, I investigate the elements in each feature, I visualize the data, so this is like EDA to explore if I have any relationships, here is to explore if I have any outliers, so you can see the outlier up here, here is where you can check the distribution of your data, clean your data, delete the outliers, down here I'm doing some feature selection, Additionally, here is where I bring my data together. So things like left joins, inner joins, full joins, etc., etc. So all these steps are part of the data pre-processing phase. After you finish with data pre-processing and you create this nice clean raw data, you want to split that raw data before you feed it into your model. And the reason you want to do that is because you want to use some of that data to train your model and some of that data to evaluate your model. So you feed the model, let's say 70% of that data. The model learns itself by that data. And then you use the rest of the data that the model has never seen before. To, and you ask the model to make predictions. And then you check if those predictions are actually good. So you compare them against the actuals because you already know the actuals. Now, some people prefer to have a training and a testing data set. So usually they do an 80 to 20% split. And some other people prefer to have three different splits, 70%, 20%, and 10%, as I have over here. And they use this 70% to train, 20% to evaluate, and then that 10% they use it at the end after the hybrid parameter tuning, but it's up to you how you want to split your data. Additionally, you also have to separate your X, so independent variables, and your Y, which is going to be the dependent variable that you're trying to predict. And just to show you a practical example, I'm going back to the tutorial, and here is where I split my raw data using the holdout validation technique. So first of all, I split my data into X's and Y's. So X's is my independent variables and Y is only one column, what I'm trying to predict. And then I use the holdout validation technique to uh, split my raw data additionally into a uh, 70% X train, 20% X test and 10% X valid in order to train my data on these ones. And then my Y's over here is to test my data uh, test the accuracy of my model basically. After you finish step number four, then you're going to move into selecting and training your model. So here you have three options, classification, regression, and unsupervised learning. In classification is where you're trying to predict a class. If it's a good loan or a bad loan, if it's a spam or not a spam, etc., etc. Regression is when you're trying to predict a number so a continuous number and unsupervised learning is when you're not predicting anything. You're actually investigating similar characteristics within a group. So let's, let's say you're trying to create a segmentation of people who behave uh, similarly. Right. Some classification examples I, I have over here is a logistic regression, which is the example in the tutorial over here. Naive base, decision trees, random forest, support vector machines, etc., etc. Some regression examples. So this is where we predict a number is a linear regression, which again is one of the tutorials I have. Uh, we have random forest regressor, a support vector regressor, a neural network regression, and many more. And some example of unsupervised learning is k-means or hierarchical clustering. Right. After you do select the model you want to run, so in our case, let's say we selected a logistic regression, then we have to fit the model that's 70% of the data. 
So what I do, the 70% is that X train. So what I do is that I call logistic regression over here, and then I fit into my model, my X train, again, that's 70% and my X, sorry, my, yeah, my X train and my Y train. Just a quick note here is that in real life scenarios, you actually want to train three to five different models just because models and algorithms do work different to each other and some of them are going to perform better depending on the structure of the data. So you do want to test a few different algorithms and then uh, select the one with the highest accuracy or the best performance, I'm going to say, just because uh, accuracy might not be the metric you are going for. Right, moving on, the next step you have to do is to evaluate your model. So you can use a number of different metrics to evaluate your model. However, what you have to note here, which is very important, is that you are going to evaluate your model on that 20% unseen data that you have split it over here. So we've trained the data on the 70% and now we want to test the model. We ask from the model to make predictions and we only give it this 20% unseen data, the Xs, and we ask him to give us the Y. What's the model's prediction? And some example of metrics now is the R square, classification accuracy, log loss, confusion matrix, precision, recall, etc., etc. Just to give you examples now, practical examples, here we have our logistic regression example. Here we use a confusion matrix to evaluate our model. We also use a sensitivity, hit rate or recall, a precision or false positive rate or false negative rate. Additionally, we are also using logarithmic loss. We're trying to minimize the loss. If you are running a regression, then you want to look into evaluating your model based on uh, the R square, or maybe you want to check the root mean square error. Maybe you want to check the root mean absolute error, etc., etc. So these are just some examples of the metrics that you are using to evaluate your model. After you finish with the model evaluation, then you want to look if your model allows you to tune any of its parameters. And the reason you want to do this is because you want to avoid overfeeding and also enable more uh, generalization uh, into your model. So make your model more applicable into new and seeing data, new future data. Now, please note that not all models allow you to do this. So this is depending on your models and some examples of the parameters you can tune is the regularization parameter C, the number of neighbors, the different distance functions, different ways, different distributions, penalty functions, the gamma value, et cetera, et cetera. And just to show you an example of how you would approach this is that let's say you're running logistic regression you want to go into the official documentation of logistic regression, for example, and read about all the parameters that it offers and check which ones you can actually change and test. So in our case, we can look into uh, looking into the C parameter, which is the inverse uh, regularization of strength. You can also adjust, let's say, the penalty functions. You can adjust the solver and then check again the uh, accuracy or depending which metric you are testing to see if your model has improved. And a more practical example, I'm going to go back into our model now and show you that here what I'm doing, I'm doing hybrid parameter in our logistic regression and I'm looking into the parameter of C. So I'm using 20 different C parameters, which I have over here, and I'm looping into uh, this parameter and I run my model 20 different times based on that those parameters that I have specified above, above here. And I'm actually checking if the log loss, the logarithmic loss is actually going down. So if it's going down, it means that my model is improving. And what I'm doing is that I'm saving the results into a data frame, let's say, and I'm selecting the C parameter that gives me the lowest logarithmic loss, as you can see over here, and the highest classification accuracy. So this is an example of how you can uh, tune your hybrid parameters of your model. 
The next step now, which is the practical example that I have just shown you, is to rerun your model again, to train it again, based on the different parameters that you feed over here, which is exactly what I have just shown you, that I'm rerunning my model 20 different times over here, uh, just to loop over those C parameters. And I'm coming here into evaluating my model again. I'm selecting the hybrid parameter that gives me the best result, which I, I have just shown that, let's say I'm selecting this uh, C parameter because it gives me the lowest log loss and the highest classification accuracy. And the final step I wanna do is to test my model on that 10% I'm seeing data that we have left behind down here. So this is totally new to the model again. We have never trained or evaluated our model in that 10%. And if I'm happy with this, this is where I'm actually going to deploy the model. So what I do is that I go down to the end, I say final model with selected parameters, and I'm actually testing my model on my valid, my Y valid and my X valid. And this valid, if you remember, is actually my third data set. Let me see if I can find it quickly, which is the one that we call the valid, which is the one that has the last 10% of the data. Now, please note that data science does not finish in step eight down here. If we go back here, which is what does a data scientist do, what we have just shown is step three, four, and five. So there is a few more steps to do uh, after you finish with your model, which is share the model with the business, get feedback, then you also have to decide how to deploy the model, and you also have to spend time with the business to educate the business how to use your model. Additionally, there is a few steps before you even start to go into the machine learning process. So if you want to learn more about this, you should go and watch my video about what does a data scientist do in his day-to-day work. Right, so this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and you actually gain a very good understanding about the machine learning process. Additionally, I also suggest you actually go and do my tutorials, my two tutorials on machine learning, which is actually what's going to help you really understand the machine learning process. Additionally, if you feel that you've gained enough value out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you click that like button, subscribe to my channel, and enable notifications for my future videos. If you have any questions about this video, again, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video, and I'm going to see you on the next video.